Today, let's talk about Apologia's Young Explorer series. I'm going to give you some, I don't know, unfiltered thoughts and opinions about the series, what you need to know, a few tips and tricks that might help you save your sanity and make the most of this resource. So let's get started. The first thing that I get asked all the time is which series, which of the books out of the Young Explorer series should I use first? And the answer is you can use whichever one you want. However, there are a few that are easier than others. I recommend for the youngest ages to start with botany, astronomy, or to start with the earth science book. For the oldest years, I like to save things like chemistry and physics and anatomy study as those are a little more in depth. But I also get asked regularly, do I actually use the student journals? And here I'm here to tell you guys a secret. I've gotten the student journals almost every year that we have done Apology of Science. And I have found out the secret. <laughs> for some of the studies, I think they're completely unnecessary. For the botany one, for example, I loved being able to just get to get a cheap sketchbook from Walmart and to have my kids draw and write um, what they observed, being able to do the diagrams and all of those things. For chemistry and physics, I found it was kind of unnecessary because the most of the way that you interact with chemistry and physics is doing chemistry and physics through those real life experiences. So I found the notebooks to be kind of superfluous. But when it came to astronomy and like with this year, as we are working on anatomy, me, I definitely wanted the student journals because there's a lot of things where those visuals are helpful, being able to see the diagrams, being able to have the interactive notebooking pieces that they come with. It's hugely helpful to my kids and they're more abstract concepts that help my kids to see things that maybe they can't see with their eye. When it comes to those student books, do I buy one for each kid? So I've done this many different ways. I have bought one for each child. I have bought one for the whole group to share. I have bought one for pairs of kids to share. And I find different things have worked better in different seasons. As my kids are getting older this year, I am buying them each their own individual one, again, because I think they'll be able to keep up with it. When we initially started, I bought them each their own individual one. And frankly, it was overwhelming. They were not all proficient writers, either because of their dyslexia or because of their age. And so because of that, I found myself being torn in all the directions, trying to help them fill out all the papers and it was just too much or helping them glue the different things. So at the younger ages, I probably, if you have a lot of kids and you don't have older kids who can do it on their own, I would recommend maybe getting one to work on as a group. If you have older kids, then I recommend having individual ones, although you can get away with sharing. So in a video that I did, I don't know, three years ago, somebody asked me, should I use the audio books? audio resources from Apologia. And I at the time said no. I said that they were a little dry and weren't that engaging and interesting. I now have to go back and eat my words on that one. <laughs> I actually have grown to love the Apologia audiobooks. They are really engaging and interesting. I do think there is a difference between the ones that we originally started with. So the very first Apologia book we did was Flying Creatures before they redid this latest edition. And so with that, we had done the audiobook. It did seem very dry and it also read all of the science experiments from what I remember. Um, so like if there was a, anything that was on the page, it just read it, which you don't need to hear all the instructions for the science experiments while you're in the middle of your lesson. The updated versions, like the earth science one that we just did, were beautifully done. They were very engaging. They did not read over every single science experiment in the book, and my kids absolutely love them. I also love the fact that you can get them as mp3 downloads now, so I'm able to put them on my phone and we can listen to them in the car. Speaking of different editions, the question is, do the editions matter? Can I just use an older edition instead of getting the latest and greatest? You can, you definitely can. And if you were looking on working on a budget, I definitely think that's a great way to go. However, I would say this is one of those areas where I really recommend getting the newer edition, even if you buy it used, because they've made so many updates to them that have made it more readable. They have broken up the sections better. They've updated all the pictures. Every single level that I have used is of the newer edition has been way more engaging, had better instructions, and makes me feel better equipped as a parent. Not to mention that for things like astronomy, some of the stuff has actually changed since the first edition was written. So it's kind of important to get the most up-to-date information. But how do I schedule these different units, right? When you look at the table of contents, you think there's no way that this can take only one year. And when you look at the individual chapters, you think there is no way this can be done in a day or in a week. And that is because it was never intended for that. It is intended to be done over a two week period, every single chapter that will give you a nice, well-rounded whole year curriculum. Some people do like to go through them kind of at an accelerated pace and do one, one semester and one, the other. That's a lot. But if you like that, go for it. 
A couple of things you should know is that you have, they have natural breaking points. You can read as much or as little every time you sit down to read, but if you follow the breaking points, it works out pretty well. There are different places that will have orange text and those are little review questions for you to go over. Hint, there's answers to those orange questions in the back of every single Apologia book. So you don't have to wreck your brain trying to remember, or if your child is doing it independently, you can easily go through, ask them those questions and make sure that their comprehension was on point. So speaking of doing things independently, Apologia recommends that these Young Explorer books be used from like first grade to sixth grade. I actually disagree with that a little bit. I actually prefer to use them for seventh and we're actually even using them into eighth grade next year. There is a big jump between Apologia's Young Explorer series and jumping into their next levels. Their next levels are definitely high school level in my personal opinion. So I wouldn't recommend personally starting anything more than the Young Explorer series until eighth at the earliest, probably ninth grade. That's just me and my personal opinion, but that's where I'm at. So I actually prefer to save those harder ones like chemistry and physics, saving the anatomy ones, doing those later in the year, but having them dive more in depth, having them maybe do some of the extra books and some of the extra projects. And next year, I'm gonna be having my boys doing it a little bit more independently and checking in with them regularly. I think that'll be a nice way to prepare them for those harder books coming up next year. All right, so the next question is, do I actually do all of the experiments? No. Never, ever have I done all of the experiments. I pick and choose the experiments at the beginning of the year with my friend, Aaron. We go through and we do a co-op together twice a month. So every two weeks when we finish a chapter, we get together and we do one, maybe two science experiments together. If we don't do it in co-op, I don't get it done. So I have that accountability for myself. But also a little hint, we pick at the beginning of the year, which experiments we're gonna do. And we keep in mind what kind of mom we will be in the month that we are choosing for. What do I mean by that? Well, let me explain. We simply go through and we choose the more involved, the more fun, the messier ones for the beginning of the year when we are feeling refreshed and excited and ready to conquer the world. And at the end of the year, when we're a little more tired, ready to phone it in, we pick the much more simple ones. And sometimes we even just pick watching doing the science experiment on a YouTube video instead of doing it ourselves. Speaking of YouTube, YouTube is a great way to work with and have an extra resource when it comes to apology of science. It doesn't need any supplementing whatsoever. However, my kids are very visual and sometimes it can be a lot of auditory text. So we will oftentimes look up different things, YouTube videos on different things that we're reading about in our chapter and that really helps to bring it to life for my visual learners and reinforce those concepts. Also recently, we have been enjoying the different science kits from Nature's Workshop Plus that help send us all of the different science experiment supplies so that we can easily just grab the bag that's numbered and labeled and do the science experiment without having to think about it. I hope you've enjoyed hearing my unfiltered thoughts on Apologia saying we love it, but we do adapt it to make it work best for our family. And I hope you will too. Check out the link down below to see more of what they have to offer in their series and know that they're coming out with new books every year, updating old ones and coming out with new ones. So stay tuned for more information. Bye.